Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to be doing the finally fall book tag. I saw Driftless Reader do this the other day and she tagged anybody who thought it sounded interesting and I definitely thought that this tag sounded awesome. I am a huge fall fan and I'm super excited to share this video with you guys. I will be leaving the name of Driftless Reader's channel as well as Tall Tales channel who is the creator of this tag in the description box. But let's get started. So the first question says, in the fall, the air is crisp and clear. Name a book with a vivid setting. For me, I picked my well-loved copy of The Fellowship of the Ring by J.R.R. Tolkien. Whenever I read this book and the other two in the trilogy, I am just immediately sucked into this world. I feel myself traveling along with our main characters throughout Middle Earth. And I just, I really love this series. And I think one of its biggest strengths is the setting. So this is my pick for question number one. Number two says, nature is beautiful, but also dying. Name a book that is beautifully written but also deals with a heavy topic like loss or grief. For this, I picked The Fault in Our Stars by John Green. This is a young adult novel that follows our main characters, Hazel and Augustus, who both have had childhood cancer, and Hazel is still suffering from childhood cancer. And the way that they handle themselves in the face of this really scary, situation of being so ill is really motivating. I find that even though I'm older than them, every time I pick up this book and give it a read, I'm inspired to keep looking for the positives in life, even when it seems like there might not be any positives. So I, I chose Fault in Our Stars by John Green for the second question. Number three says, the fall is back to school season. Share a nonfiction book that taught you something new. I chose Alexander Hamilton by Ron Chernow. This is the book that inspired Lin-Manuel Miranda to create the musical Hamilton. I'm a huge fan of the musical, and I am also studying to become a middle school or high school social studies teacher. So this book is right up my alley. I feel like I have learned so much about the Revolutionary War, as well as Hamilton and the other individuals around him during this time period. It is a dense read. It is taking a long time to get through, but I highly suggest it if you're looking for a wonderful nonfiction read. Number four says, in order to keep warm, it's good to spend some time with the people we love. Name a fictional family, household, or friend group that you would like to be a part of. For this, I picked the Swenson family from Joanne Fluke's Hannah Swenson Cozy Mystery series. I just feel like I would be best friends with Hannah, who is the main character, and I would really love to work at the cookie jar, which is her bakery. And her sisters, Andrea and Michelle, just seem like really awesome people. And I just think that I'd vie really well with this family and I'd love to spend some time with them. Number five says, the colorful leaves are piling up on the ground. Show us a pile of fall colored spines. So I'm going to show you the pile and then I'm just gonna tell you what books are in it after I show you. So here is this beautiful orange and red pile, very fall, but let's talk about what's in this pile. So I have Double Fudge Brownie Murder by Joanne Fluke. This is a part of her Hannah Swenson series. If you're looking to try out Cozy Mysteries, I highly suggest picking up one from this series. It is the first cozy mystery series I ever read and I just instantly fell in love. I highly suggest it. Next, I have When Dimple Met Rishi, which is by Sandia Menon, which is a contemporary YA novel and it follows our characters Dimple and Rishi who are both a part of Indian American families. Dimple is looking to break away from the traditions and go off to college and study computer design and things of that nature whereas Rishi is wanting to keep his family traditions alive. The two are matched by the families to be an arranged a marriage but when they meet only Rishi knows that that is the case. So as the two get to know each other, it's just extremely funny and I really enjoy this. 
book. I think it was fun to read about it because I am actually not a part of this culture, but I felt like I, I started to get a bit of an understanding for it and I really had an appreciation for their culture by the end of this novel. Next in my stack is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. I have been rereading this series for about a year now. Every once in a while when I'm in the mood, I will just pick up a book from this series and read it. And I'm actually to the point of reading Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. So I'll probably be doing that in the next couple months or so. Next we have Inferno by Dan Brown. This is, I believe, the fourth book in his Robert Langdon series. This was an amazing read. It's super adventurous and it follows our cast of characters all around the world and I really, really loved it. They made it into a movie not too long ago and that was also very fun to watch. And last in this pile is Illumine by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. This is a YA science fiction. I don't normally read science fiction, but this is told in a very different way. The authors use media files and instant messages and and things like pictures and poetry to tell the story so it was a really fast read and the story is super entertaining and i just devoured it it's like 600 pages and i read it in just a couple days i cannot wait to get my hands on gemina which is the next book in this series number six says the fall is a perfect time for some storytelling by the fireside. Share a book wherein somebody is telling a story. So I wasn't exactly sure which book to pick for this, but I chose Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. In this, our main character Maddie is sharing her story. She is a strong young woman who unfortunately has an immune deficiency where she cannot go outside because if she does, she will fall fatally ill. And she has lived in her house for basically her whole life. And she's pretty happy with it until one day a boy moves in next door. And as she gets to know this boy, she realizes that there might be more to life than what she has experienced so far. I really love this. I gave it to my mom immediately after I read it and she really enjoyed it too. So it's pleasing for basically all ages. I highly suggest reading Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. Next we have The Nights Are Getting Darker. Share a dark creepy read. I knew exactly what I was going to pick for this, and that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte. This is by far one of my favorite classics I have ever read, but our main character Heathcliff is just that. He is dark. He is creepy. He has a lot of things that he is dealing with in this book, and I highly suggest it for anyone who enjoys Emily Bronte's work, but also those of you who've maybe really never fallen in love with a classic before because I honestly think that this is something that lots of different people will enjoy because I like everything from Pride and Prejudice to The Great Gatsby and this, but I feel like this story is one that will catch people who don't normally fall for classics because it is really dark and creepy and super psychologically interesting. Next we have The Days Are Getting Colder. Name a short heartwarming read that could warm up somebody's cold and rainy day. Well, I chose Alex and Eliza by Melissa De La Cruz. This isn't super short, it's about 350 pages, but it is a middle grade novel, and so it is a really fast read. This is the historical fiction retelling of the love story between Alexander Hamilton and Eliza Schuyler. Again, I really love Hamilton, so I was predisposed to love this book, but it is just a heartwarming love story and I really liked it. I think it's great for all ages. If you like Hamilton, if you like love stories, if you like historical fiction, go ahead and pick it up. It's a fun read. Next we have Fall Returns Every Year. Name a favorite that you like to, you'd like to return to soon. And for this, I picked up my Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone Illustrated Edition. I, like I said, have been rereading the series and I'm about to start The Deathly Hallows, but I might actually go back and reread this first and then move on to Deathly Hallows because I just want to experience this story with these beautiful illustrations that are inside. I am so happy to have this in my collection and I can't wait to keep picking up the other ones as they come out. They are a little expensive, so I kind of have to save up in between buying the different versions of these illustrated copies. And then 
Next we have, the fall is the perfect time for cozy reading nights. Share your favorite cozy reading accessory. My favorite cozy reading accessory are fuzzy socks. I almost always will have a pair of fuzzy socks on my feet when I am reading. They're just soft and cozy and warm and I really, really love them for any time of the year, but especially during the fall and winter. And then last but not least, spread the autumn appreciation and tag some people. I tag anyone who watches this and enjoys this tag and thinks it might be something that they would like to do. If you have a channel, go ahead and make this video and then let me know in the comments below because I'd love to see what your picks are. If you don't have a channel but you'd like to tell me what your picks would be for this tag, just leave them in the comments below. I'm very interested. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and I will talk to you all next time. Bye.